Hi, Shirley Peters here. How are you going? I'm just going to um, today do a painting of Sydney Harbour, a local subject for me. Oops. And it's um, a rainy day and it's quite grey, so it's uh, a little bit uh, different to the French um, scenes I've been doing lately. So um, if you go to my website, there is that, that photograph is available for download and um, you can paint along with me. So uh, a website is mentioned below, shirleypeters.com and uh, my paints, all the paints I use, the paper, the brushes, my materials in general are listed below and on my website. And one more thing, if you like this video, can you click the like button and subscribe to the channel with the little bell and that way you're notified when I upload a new video and then maybe share it. I'd love it to be spread out. <laughs> Thanks very much. sails there. I'll put those in later obviously. Uh, I'll just make sure I've got most things marked in. I'm not going to put the, the boats in at this stage. They come later. When I come down with colour I might just leave a few, have a go at leaving a few little white spots and see if that will help later on define the boats and therefore um, maybe not put them, maybe not need to use so much gouache at the end. So that said, I'm going to use what I've got mixed up here. I'm going to use a really, really, really fat brush, lovely Chinese style, no markings on it. Find them, you can find them in some art, art supplies. Just mixing up ultramarine blue and a purple for the sky. I'm trying to make it fairly strong so that there's plenty of it. So once I put it on, I can just I can just keep pulling it down the page, dipping in and pulling it down. So I'll show you what I mean by pulling it down. So here it goes on quite strong at the top. Now I'm not wetting the paper up beforehand. I'm using this ink or this coloured paint to be the, the wetness. This pad of paper is what and it allows you to stay um, uh, the paper not to wrinkle up too much. Yep. Even with all that extra effort, I've still run out of look. I've run out already, which is pretty annoying. But what I'm going to do is when I look at that picture, the the water here is so pale compared to how dark it is there so I'm just going to I'm just wetting my brush putting it back in there at that edge and bringing it out around so that will make that will make the paint start to run down the page and that will thin out that top little bit Just going to try and remember to leave a few spots here for the boats. I think I've missed my opportunity back there, but that's all right. Now I'll mix up a bit more of that rich colour, ultramarine blue, violet, and I might just put in a touch of brown to warm it up. I'll go back to the blue. You can see it's sort of a warm purpley. Mm, a bit worried about that actually. I might go add a bit of green in it to cool it back down again. There you go. I've done that. Now I'm just going to start putting in a few little 
wind drifts where the wind hits the water goes a bit darker sometimes so just, just having it dark down here a couple of little bits over there and then nice and dark at the front or as dark as I can make it in this first layer just hit that with the dryer dry it off a little bit and then I'll come back doing the city it is um, a slightly warm a warm blue if it's imaginable when I say cool and warm cool is the blue side of like these are cool colors they like the sea and the cold wind and the cloud and these are warm colors they go from green round to brown, red and yellow. And that way you can tell they're warm like the sun, they're sunny yellows. So when I say, when I'm looking at a picture, I'm choosing whether to go cool or whether to go warm. And in this case, I can see some buildings are blue and some are creamy uh, skin tone almost. So um, it's a combination. So what I'll do is put down the blue first over this whole shape, and then I'll come back with a bit of yellow and then I'll put some stripes and some blocks in of the pale yellow and pale orange. And then the combination of the two, if I do it while the first layer is wet, then it, it will mix together and look nice and interesting from a distance. So let's start with whatever's on my brush, which is a nice little... Uh, I'll just... I'll just whoop, too dark. Even though this will fade at the back, it will all, all watercolours do fade out after you've put them on. Just have to be also kind of half aware that you don't overdo that, uh, the darkness. So I'm just going to come in with a few. I'm using this wedge brush because it's just um, easy to do like that, a building. <laughs> How easy is that? Another building. And another one. I'm still I'm in two minds about whether I'm too dark here, and I'll tell you in a minute because I'll know if I can if it'll start to fade out. I'll just keep going. Here's a beautiful thing you can do with this particular um, brush. Is it nice thin line? Even two sides just to show off. Now, there we go. A bit more. More, more, more. So I'm just joining, now I'm going to join them all up together across the base. Give them a sort of a uniform feel. Much paler out the side there, but I'll deal with those. Now, see how that's lo looking? It started off quite strong here and it's gone very weak there. I'll come back in with that yellow, orangey, yellow mix that I was talking about to, to warm it up a little bit. I'm going to yellow. I think I'll go orange on some of these buildings. Just dab it in here and there. Lines, blocks, lines, blocks. In a random way. I'm not looking at my original. Not that way. I'll put that one in. I just had a glance there and saw some smaller buildings. So I'll just put them in like that. Now, I'm going to use my brush while that's wet. Use a brush that's just been cleaned off, dry brush, and then I'm going to just suck out some of the areas. That way you get a nice paler version of what you just have. So there. I won't suck it all out, just leave a few gaps there. That gives buildings foreground, background. Some pop out at you, some don't. And you can then start doing little horizontal lines to give you an impression of low rise buildings. might be coming over this later with a bit more um, maybe dark grey, dark blues but just to begin with that's all you need to do to indicate the city skyline for Sydney. Every city has its own little mark and for us it's that centre point tower and of course the harbour bridge which um, I'll do soon. I just want to do these buildings just down the front here 
Um, ma mainly they are the grey ones, so um, I might have come a bit deep on that sketch. I'll just correct my sketch. That's them in. Um, I'll get some very dark paint on the edge of my brush and just touch the bottom edge. Try and give that a definition of where the water is going to be. There's another building back there. A little bit of blue. There is surprisingly green, a lot of green trees there in the Barangaroo parkland, but I won't put them in. Hmm. Oh, maybe I will. Okay, just to show you how it works. Wet in wet. Wet in wet means wet brush, wet paint going onto wet uh, paper. And it means it's not going to, it's going to spread basically. It's not going to just sit there and do what you want it to. It's going to move around a bit. The edges are going to run. So I'll just do a little bit of for a cityscape, sometimes a sideways swipe like that is very useful. Now, I'm going to clean off my brush. I'm going to attack the harbour bridge. Now, this is quite a challenge. What I'm trying to do is get a very dark, um, a bit steel grey colour without it going totally to black. I'm going to put it on an angle so I can try and get this in one swoop. And I'll see how I go. Hold my breath. Oh, two sweeps. It's thinner in the middle. And down to there, okay. Good enough. Don't overdo it. Go have one go at it, and that's it. And yes, it's wonky. I'm let's show you what to do. It's, I'm so not going to care about that wonkiness, but I am going to put that horizontal line in. I use my little finger to try and steady my hand when I have to do things like that. Now, these under it's almost like a double line at the bottom there the double line at the top only do a little bit don't do it all the way across and then go vertical 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 like that so I diagonal 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 like that just a little few dots there to match up and then what I'm going to do is put a little bit of water over that to smudge it not all of it just a little bit smudge it here and there See, in and out, that's a loss. I'll just try and straighten that up like that, a little bit of wetness. And then this side, it comes the other way and I'll just dab that water across. That's enough. You just hint at the bridge. You don't paint it in all over. Just do bits and then just put some water on it, make it loose, make it even run down the page. It doesn't matter. It's vaguely the bridge. It's as vague as these buildings. You don't want detail. You don't want detail here. You don't want detail there. Detail is what you do at the front here. If you have to do any detail at all, you do it in the foreground where your eye focuses. But the background is designed to be a bit of a fuzz, a bit of a, just a hint of where, where you are. The less is more. I'm just going to put these little uh, shapes in for the opera house there. Uh, that's the other thing I haven't done here is that the lines are coming straight down. A couple of lines here and there, straight down, like that. Finishes off the bridge shape. I'll do some down there. Now, in front here is a much, much, much stronger colour. And I'm, I'm taking a bit of sap green and mixing it with a bit of ultramarine blue and using my nice um, chisel brush so I'm just going to fiddle in some uh, shapes random shapes down the front right to the very edge which is where that, that came just going to put in oh way too bright Let's see I'm not concentrating I'll blame the dog i just knock it back with a bit of purple. A couple of different shapes here because it's giving me the idea of, a, um, of the high-rise buildings over here that are made of red brick. And a couple of different shapes here. Just random shapes. Down the front there's some units or something, townhouses. 
go back to the green, put the green in around the base, and on that side. Oh, at least the blowfly's got quiet, the dog's making a noise. Now, I'll go back to a nice mop for doing these um, grassy areas. And, and I'm just going to pop a bit of, of purpley blue in there just to darken that off and to make it look a little bit more interesting. The beauty of watercolour is it runs, it runs around and does its own thing, so you don't have to actually um, control it that much. Just put it in and then the water the water moves the paint around and the image comes really nice. So I'll just go back around there like that. That's that foreground. I'll take those right to the edge. Um, I'll swap over to this side now and do this foreground here. Now this, this side I'm going to load up my brush with green and a bit of ultramarine blue again. And I'm actually going to just twist it sideways. That's the beauty of these mop brushes because the little t the little top is catching and putting some nice shapes there. I'll just go right to that edge and I can come back in with some more deep backwards and forwards, a few little Z's like that. And then down the bottom here it goes quite dark so I'll load up the brush again, more blue, more brown. I'll turn it this way and then I'll scramble back, being a little bit more controlled this time, allowing for the shadow at the bottom of the trees. I'm going slow, letting the paint really soak in. Right, that's about it for that. Clean my brush. While that's still wet, I'm going to come back in there with burnt sienna, and I'm going to let it just soak up into the blue around the edge there in a sort of once again a random way dry the brush is half dry so it gives that leaves those little specks you want those little specks left and when I look over here I can do the same on that one I can do the same all the way around here a little tiny bit out there so it's picked up the green there gone turned itself into a bit of green that's all right so that's that mid-tone area. Not, I'm not saying it's finished, but it's that's the the basis of that. Of, of, that's the structure. Now down the foreground here, it's a lot of fun because it's rocks. Now the beauty of rocks are is that there's no rules. So basically, I'm going to put down the background. It looks like there's a lot of orange in there. And just to double check, I'm just going to put this colour down just to see and I just compare the colour it's near enough touch more orange in that to make it richer and the reason I'm doing that is then I'm going to come over it with that dark blue well it looks like grey but once it mixes with this orange I know it'll turn black dark blue so just to start with I'm going to do this oh there's see that there that's a bloom going back up that's a mistake that's where I let a a little puddle of water and same here sit there I should have had my eye on that and soaked it up with my brush but never mind we all do that and I'll show you how to fix it in a minute meantime let's finish this area just doing the, the where the, the rocks are this is an underpainting for these rocks it's the basic background Now there's some long thin pipes here that are a little bit awkward and I don't blame you if you just leave them out. Now while that's wet I'll mix up my ultramarine blue and uh, violet and I'm going to go over this with some, I'm not going to paint it completely in, I'm just going to dab it here and there. A little bit on the top there, but more so really thickly on the bit where the, the shadow is the strongest. And this is where I'll mark in that little step. I'm 
And I'm looking at these, these, at these rocks and looking for the areas that are shaded most down there. So, there's a funny little box thing there on the corner, which might have been an old column. So, blue, ultramarine, um, ultramarine blue and purple. Now, I'll just stop at that point. I'll come in from here. I'll put a little bit down here for the shadow areas. Touch across. I'm going to get some plain blue on my brush and I'm just going to experiment a little bit with that. What's happening here is there's the palest of pale bluey colours there. You can't really tell but I'm pretty sure it's reflecting the sky. So I'm just going to see how I go putting in a little bit of a paler colour blue there. Okay that's good enough. And then I can see because this colour is so beautiful and rich and just pick out, while it's wet, pull out that highlight at the top there, that what I called light blue before, and I'll just turn it back into the paper colour, which means it gives me the freedom to come in later and um, add, add light blue that I'd like to have there. If I did the painting again, I'd, I'd consider leaving it, uh, so that leaving it white so I could put that blue in. Or you could actually do an underpainting of a little bit of blue there and then not. Anyway, I'll shut up about the blue. Now, where are we? So as you can see, I'm picking out some of the highlights. The beauty of this picking out with a dry brush is you get random texture and stroke. It's not necessarily anything you have control over. You just, have it, you just wipe the brush across and you see what happens. At the moment it's almost like two different paintings, the colours are so different. But that said, I shall persevere here and finish this off. So I've been wiping backwards and forwards over this. It's like when you put a dark colour over light colour, you can go in with this dry brush technique and wipe it back out. It's fabulous. Once it starts to dry, you can't do it. And you have to do it while it's wet. Okay, now that said, I've got some green bushes and things to go in down here, which is pretty good because that means it'll cover up those two little areas of bloom. I have to mix the right dull brown. This is where you can ruin a painting. You don't want a bright green there. You almost just want a, a grey, another grey colour. So you have to keep it very, very, very dark, gloomy blues, purples, and just a touch of green. See if that works. Once again I'll put it on the paper. Yeah, that's pretty good. And what I might do again is do that scribble. I mean the, what do you call it, twist scribble thing. It gives such a nice little edge that you can't really, you can't do deliberately. It's just random. Now and then I'll turn the brush back the other way and scribble it back that way. I might even put a bit more dark blue on that to make it more of a shadow area because it is right down there. Mm -hmm. Just to finish it off, use the tip, a couple of little touches there. It'll, I'll take it right out into the open there. Now I've got another one over here. 
I tend to like to paint what's there. Some, some people leave a lot out. I've left that building out, but that's about all the rest of it I'll try and put in to make it true to the, the area. On there, there's a nice green bunch there, but I'm actually going to do some more here to cover up that little bloom I put in. I'll just turn that into a little tree. Right. Okay, that's your foreground and mid-ground and background almost in. Some other things I can see. Right at the front here I can, oh, it's a bit wet. But what I might do now is go back to, um, see I'm leaving the water in the boats till last. That's going to be the fun part. I can see I need to add a, quite a deep tonal area around that, the reflection of that. I need to reflect those dark areas off and absolutely no reflection over there because it's being rained on. But, so what I'll do is get a medium size mop and, uh, and I might just get some clean water. With, uh, I think I'll just quickly go back over the city and I'm going to mix up a little bit of my blue. I think I'd, I like the idea of um, a little bit of cerulean blue, a pretty colour blue, and um, ultramarine together. Put in a new pot, a new spot. And what I'm going to do is just touch a few col this colour into some of these buildings here to give a slight visual interest. And I just use the tip of my brush. If I can zoom in, I will. There's another. There's a little triangle building at the back there, a little triangle top that is quite uh, Sydney, from what I remember. I haven't seen it for a little while. Changes a lot. So I'm just going to put down these horizontal lines here, there, a few buildings behind. Just using the blue over the top of the brown and the, and the yellow. That I mean the grey and warm tones that I've already put down. So just bear with me while I fiddle. And mainly whatever you do here will fade out again. It'll be, providing you keep it mid-tone, it will go darker. I mean, sorry, lighter. <laughs> It'll go lighter. Horizontal, verticals, very, very casual like that. Now, just in the front part here, I'm just going to go a few little spots to show that these buildings have windows and doors, and they're on they're on a, a wharf. Horizontal line there. So hopefully that will be enough for that. I don't know that I need to do much more. Maybe with the bridge I just need to add that little line going in there to make it look like there's two buildings. Um, back here, I'm just hunting for things that jobs that need doing. Blacking out that, or bluing out that uh, white area and that will, that will lighten up. Don't have to worry. Just behind the opera house there you could just see some um, distant colours, very. So I'll just put those in there to define the um, sails. Now, now I get to the serious part of putting reflection in the water. So I'm going to mix up a very dark blue and purple again. Yeah. If you follow me, you tend to see I'm pretty stuck on a few colours. I'm just going to throw the ultra, the um, little bit of cerulean blue in for a bit of uh, fun. So I'm just going to pop that there. Have a just put some paint around the edge of the build of that. Now I'm going to wash my brush, and with just the wet brush, wipe it a little bit on the side of the pot. Just going to bring that down into the water's edge run I'm just ru running clear water across the edge of that see how that's coming down 
that's my reflection. So I do it right to the edge. Now, temptation is to keep fiddling, and I probably will, because what I want to do using the wet, wetness of the brush is to now just work that into some horizontal patterns, stripes, and in a way get rid of it. You don't want it to keep happening. You don't want it to come all the way down the page. You just want to keep it fairly high up. And anything, if you put anything on water and you don't really like it, just pull it sideways. And then, then it will look like a reflection of something. And you can always add something later that it's reflecting like a boat. So I'm just pulling those out that way. Now I'm going to do the same over this side. Hmm tempted to do add a bit more green on this side because it's closer and you can see that green reflected so I'm just going to put that there not quite dark enough I think I need to go much 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 darker so I'll quickly throw a bit more paint together yeah that's better and once again I'll wet my brush wash the, wash the paint off wet brush so you know it's clear, and then I'm just going to wet that, pull it out sideways, pull it that way. This is the fun of watercolour, you're really using the water to do the painting for you. Right, so that's the reflection. If I find later that is too dark for that, I'll darken this up a bit more. While that's drying, I'm going to come back down here and I'm going to put a nice warm brown over that whole area and that will be um, burnt sienna, a little bit of burnt umber, a touch of ultramarine blue, grey it down a bit, no too, that's too warm I want to go much bluer. So coming over the top of everything I've done before to darken it off because I just don't think it's dark enough. So then you could say, well, why did you do all that before? And in a minute you'll see because it'll, when it dries, you'll see through this layer to the layer beneath. So the layer beneath is not wasted at all. But I just want to make that really dark in the front. To make a painting pop, sometimes you go black in the front. And I know that's uh, a lot of watercolourists will probably uh, fall on the floor with, with that statement but that's my my personal method so what I'm doing there is running my dryish brush across the base to pick up any loose blobs of water so because I don't want them to shoot back up now if you look carefully at this area that's not too reflective um, you start to see the colours that I put down before are coming through. If I want them to come through stronger, I'll go in with this um, brush when it's, and I'll demonstrate that a little bit. Oh. Forgot to get the kitchen paper. <laughs> oh well. It's a little bit of white there in that puddle. I'll just put that brush in there and just see what I can pick out. Pick out a little bit of white on that. And there's a bit up here too. So what I'm doing is getting that under colour, which is not what I want, but it doesn't matter. <clears throat> I might just, for the sake of it, take out the top of these little stairs. They're very unclear in the photograph, so I'll just do a couple of little lines across like that. So that's obviously there. And these long bars of... I don't know if I can do those or not. That might not work. I'm trying to make the highlight the top of them. They are pretty confusing as to what they're there, what they're there for. So to tell you the truth, I might just leave them. Um, while I'm here, I can go back into that and make that darker. And what I use there is ultramarine blue and burnt umber. That's about as close as you get to black without actually digging into black and you don't black itself is a pretty deadening color I must admit it is a last resort so I'm just putting those dark shades in there using my side of the brush rolling it around in my fingers again 
don't really want that light patch coming in so I want to get rid of that and on my brush because it's not mixed really well you can see there's bits of orange and bits of blue what I might do is also add bits of green to as I go now down here I'm just going to use the tip of the brush and just draw in some definite shapes and that will make it satisfying for the eye just to see some maybe tree trunks maybe rocks maybe the odd boat pulled up there that'll be fun I'm going to take this land out to that point this land here can have a point on it maybe maybe I'm just fiddling this is silly I'm going to put Sorry. Studio assistant. Hmm. She barks. Neighbours driving down. Now. More detail. Or oh, lack of detail, but scribbles. Okay. Let me think. What am I looking at here? Now. I want to go even darker there. The way to go darker is for a, to wait for it to totally dry. Now I'm not going to wait because I'm in a hurry. I'll be uh, putting my dryer on that. And these boats here, I want I I don't want them to merge and spread all over the water. I want them to be sharp little objects sitting on the on the water. So they'll be doing I'll be doing them last as well. So at the next stage, I'm just going to go and get the dryer, dry this off, and then I'll come back and we'll finish off. This areas here need darkening at the front just to define those rocks and to give them shapes and of course I need to put in all my boats one trick to do with boats is to do the uh, um, the hull and then to wet underneath so that it goes down into the water a little bit then come in later with your gouache over the top and then give it the uh, final tweak which is your mask so I'm just making sure that everything else is pretty much looked after. There's a lot of little fiddly bits I'd like to go over. And what I often do is get a rigger, which is like this. This is the fun part at the end of the painting. Can't do much wrong with the rigger, you know, you just you just fiddle around with it a little bit. I wouldn't go into that background anymore. I think that's been done enough. But you can add little little bits of trees like this and little branches sticking out here and there um, often less is more so don't overdo it and here I am saying you can't overdo it you can overdo it um, let's face it uh, I might just for the fun of it add a few lines of detail using dark a dark brown here on the edge of this this particular headland here has a lot of interesting rock formations and in another painting that could be a focus those rocks I won't bother now but I'll just put a hint of them there um, I'm not going to bother putting this um, um, structure down here in either it's a little bit of a distraction it's not necessary for the whole picture and it might zoom your eye down into that point you don't want that so what I will do though I'll start with the uh, the boats at this stage and see how we go with those and if I mess up, then you'll, you'll be witnessing how I can try and save. I'm going to use a very fine... Well, will I use a fine one? You know what I might do? I might just have a bit of a practice first. And just see how I'm going to put these boats in. So I'm just thinking of a little squiggle like that. And then a little bit of wetness underneath to pull it down. I think that'll be the way I go. Good enough. So... I'll mix up a, a blue and uh, a purple and um, a, a, a ultramarine, a, a purple whatever one I'm using, I've got a variety, and uh, with a burnt umber. So the more blue you put in, the blacker it looks. It's less likely to be a dark brown, it's more likely to be a neutral grey, a dark neutral grey. So 
Now I've got to decide, do I want all these boats in or just a couple? And you know what? I only want a couple because a couple will tell the story. I don't need all of them. They're going to look like freckles. And uh, that one's good. Now, just a couple of little shapes here, like that defined ones. There. There. Oh, nice chorus of kookaburras. Pull over here, over here, and a nice big shaped thing there. That might be enough. So I'm going to wet my brush now, same brush. I'm just going to put a bit of water under each one. Start with the first one I did. Drag them down into sort of a reflection happening. Oops. More recent ones are wetter. Notice how I've left that in a little, like a V on either end to make it look like it's sitting up out of the water. Okay, that's it. Don't do any more. Just stop yourself. Oh, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll do a bit more. All right, nearly there. Now, if you want to, if it's on a windy, no, if it's, if you feel like it, let's face it, you can do a little bit of a horizontal line with a dry brush going through that. Sometimes it, I don't think it's necessary in this particular one. Anyway, that gives me my um, hulls. And... Uh, what I might do now is a little bit of a hint of the upper, the upper part of the boats in so much as I'll put a few little grey spots and then I'll just drag up to form the, uh, to form the mast. So in this case, I'll just do a little thing like that. Actually, I won't do the mast yet. I'll leave the mast. They're, the, they're going to be the hardest thing and I'll probably turn upside down for that, turn the painting. So a little bit of a... Uh, hint of stuff happening above above the hull often it's their um, their uh, what do you call it the sail that has been or sheet no it's not the sheet is it the sail that's been folded down and uh, rolled out the back there that one hmm. lost a bit you can have the fun of putting in a few little dots of red. One of these has got red on the side. Just put a bit of red on. The red on that one. That's fun. You don't need to reflect it down in the water if you don't want to. Tiny. It's noticed the brush is so small, making it really easy. I won't put on all of them, but <laughs> most of them got a bit of red then. Um, okay, well while I'm at it, just for the fun of it. Notice how and that most of these, the reflection is not coming down through the water of that mast. If it was not so windy, I think there was a bit of wind up this day, and you don't see that lovely re reflection coming down. But I might reserve the, I might have to, I might do it. So on each one of these, and you have to think about where the mast is. It's usually halfway along, in which case, or it's at the front where, yeah, that's right. Just run it like this. None of them. Some of them are quite tall. Which one's the tallest? This red one, I think. But only up to about there. Okay, there. Not putting a whole lot of detail. Oh, this is a tall one. Ran the wrong, ran the wrong way. Okay. Let's see what it looks like. <laughs> back now just for the fun of it a tiniest little bit of dots underneath to show that mast reflected and the reason I'm putting dots is because there's waves and they're not exactly the same dot there's just a little bit of a, a blob here and there 
and then in that one to line. So now I'm going to wet the brush, just going to drag through a little bit of some of those, knock them out. So put them in and then take them out again. And that leaves a little bit of a, 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 a what do you call it, a, um, a little bit of a wave going through the water. Um, down here I've got quite, I've left a bit there, I should have really taken that right in and I don't know whether I should fiddle with that or not but then on the other hand when someone frames it they're going to want to frame it all the way in there to get rid of those. So I need to come back, it's a little bit of an error, it happens, how to fix errors is one of my fun things. So I'm just going to take a strong brush, add some dark and then play with it like it's a pattern. When I say dark, ultramarine blue, burnt umber. I'll fill in right down to the edge and then I'm just going to follow that pattern going across like that. And with a big brush, I should have used a big brush to start with. I can see there's a lovely shadow coming down here, a lovely reflection from the top of that. So that's good. And sometimes, you know, free brush strokes at the end of your painting is a nice thing to add in. Just adds that little bit of um, personality, I suppose, a bit of human touch. Okay, I'll leave that there. I'll come back here now and do these dark areas, and then it's nearly done. Just as I say that, the kookaburra stop. Stop. Uh, chiming whatever they do kookaburras have moved off into the distance you probably can't hear them anymore but i can hear them in the distance they're lovely so i'll just do those little steps like that random a few squiggles here and there notice how much lighter this has become since it's dried Everything lightens. The darks lighten. Unless you don't want them to then. Unless you want them to lighten then they don't. <laughs> there is a certain level of disobedience amongst watercolours. Now, just putting... What I'm trying to do is just put a shadow on this this side of the... Oh, of that tissue. It's a shadow on this side of the... Um, the uh, rocks to give it the three dimensions so the bits that go down there and then this one here has got beautiful um, cracked uh, sandstone across the top so using the point of the brush I'll just add that to the detail and the beauty of, of the painting is that that's the detail in the foreground you can add you don't necessarily want detail back here that's all very vague but down here if you have an opportunity to put a some weeds or some uh, flowers or plants at the front or in this case I've got this lovely pattern on the rock yeah now I'll put that on with that wash the brush dry it a bit and then touch water back into it and that loosens up some of those lines so some have got sharp edges and some now will have soft edges and a lot of artists call that lost and found edges which is very poetic Run your finger across it too. You can always do that every now and then just for the sake of it. Puts your little bit of DNA in the picture. Um, now I'm pretty sure I've finished. I could go on and keep fiddling like this. I'll show you how I keep fiddling. You might like to do this yourself. Get your pointy brush and just add a few more squiggles to give that rock detail beautiful just backwards and forwards round and about um, you can also take a bit of blue on your brush and go into these distant places and add more shadow but just be careful you don't overdo that and so much as um, you don't want to go too dark I'm going to put some purple in here I can definitely get dark down into this area especially seeing as then has this beautiful and what I might do for the fun of it is just take that same purple I use there put that down here in amongst 
the very edge of these rocks in a kind of zigzag way and that gives that real sharp finish on that block of land there. Take this purple up into the treetops a touch just so it matches and oh, it's getting close really dark. I need to smooth out the edge of this rock so much as so it's obvious that these plants are growing well below right. I just might just do a couple of strokes there and that's it done that's my Sydney in the rain so Thanks very much for watching. If you liked it, please click the like button, share it, share the video, and uh, subscribe to the, to the channel and hit the bell. That way you'll be notified when I upload another video. Thanks a lot. Bye now.